Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's algebra lesson is on special functions. So let's go ahead and define some of the things we'll be looking at today. And the first is that of a step function. Now this is a function with the graph. That is a series of horizontal line segments. Now, a piecewise linear function is a function written using two or more expressions. So a function And lastly, we have what's called the greatest integer function. Now this is a step function. Written as, and you can see it in the key concept box here below, f of x equals, and these double brackets are kind of hard, or double braces are kind of hard to draw. But we'll try our best. <laughs> Where f of x is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. And two examples of that. If a number was in these and you had 7 and 8 tenths, well this would actually be equal to 7. And here's why. 7 is the greatest integer not greater than 7.8 or 7 and 8 tenths. Okay, so 7 and 8 tenths, the greatest integer function of that, that would be 7, since 7 is the greatest integer not greater than 7 and 8 tenths. What about on the negative side of things? like negative 1 and 5 tenths. Now you might think negative 1, but it's actually going to be negative 2. And why? Same reasoning. Negative 2 is the greatest integer not greater than negative 1 Point five or negative 1 and 5 tenths, because negative 1 is larger than negative 1 and 5 tenths, so the greatest integer that's not greater than negative 1 and 5 tenths is negative 2. And knowing the difference there will come in handy as we get into our examples today. So our first set of examples asks us to graph the function and state the domain and range. We have f of x equals the greatest integer function x minus 2. Let's start off by making a table of values here. So we'll make our table. We'll start with x. And then we'll have x minus 2. And then we'll have this greatest integer, x minus 2. So let's start off with something like hmm, negative 3. Now negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. 
And the greatest integer there, if you put that in, well, that's simply just still negative 5. What about negative 2? Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Well, that just gets me negative 4. And so that's not very helpful yet. It is, but let's look at something like, before we get to negative 1, negative 1 and 5 tenths, negative 1 and a half. Because if we put that in, we'll get negative 3 and 5 tenths. Now, what is using the greatest integer function of that? Well, the greatest integer that's not greater than negative 3 and a half is negative 4. Now, what about x being negative 1? Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. The greatest integer function that is just negative 3. And let's look again at a decimal, such as negative 9 tenths. You put a negative 9 tenths there, you would get negative 2 and 9 tenths. What is the greatest integer that's not greater than negative 2 and 9 tenths? It's not negative 2, it's still negative 3. And this will mean something as we come to graph. So, if we continue this, if we put in 0, we'll get negative 2, such as negative 2. If we put in 1, that's negative 1, such as negative 1. But let's look at those in-between numbers again. Let's look at those decimals again, like 1 and a half. 1 and a half minus 2 is negative 0 0.5. And the greatest integer, that's not greater than that, it's not 0, it's still negative 1. Now we'll just finish by going 2, we get 0, and so that's still just going to be 0. Let's take a look at this graph here. This is where it gets a little bit interesting, and if you can look at our key concept box down here, we're going to be graphing something that looks like this. We'll be drawing a graph with disjointed line segments. So if we look here, negative 3, negative 5. Let's put a dot there, a complete closed circle, to negative 3, right there, and negative 5. If we just graph negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 5. That's going to be right here. Now if I put another dot at negative 2, negative 4, that's here. Now the interesting thing where this comes in, I have this negative one and a half that also produced into our function a negative four. So technically, with that negative one and a half, I'm still here at negative four. In fact, I'm there all the way up until the point when I get to negative one, which produced negative 3. So all the way from this negative 2 to the point where I get to negative 1, I'm at negative 4. And so that's where we can draw in this line here in an open circle. And then once I hit negative 1 for x, that's when I jump up to negative 3 for y. We tested negative 9 tenths, and that produced negative 3. And so even the negative 9 tenths, that's still here at negative 3. And that's true all the way from our closed dot at negative 1 all the way here. This whole, no matter what we put in, the greatest integer here is going to be on this line up until the point where we hit the axis. So we can draw a closed line and an open circle at the axis because once I hit 0, I go back now to negative 2. And so that's true here. I just keep kind of connecting these as I go, and I can keep going up like so. 
but I forgot the one down here, so we'll finish that off. But you can see where we have a step function. We're stepping up, these were the points we calculated, but also from the point we calculated up into the open circle, these are all negative 5. The answer here is negative 4, negative 3, and so on. So it's a little different, but yet not. Now our domain in this question, our x values, those are all real numbers for this question. And our range is not limited here either, so we can say all integers for this. Let's continue on to our next example. Same directions, graph the function, state the domain and range. A little different because we have f of x equals 3 times the greatest integer x, which changes things a little here. But we can still start off the same way. We can still make an xy chart. We have x. We'll have 3 the greatest integer x. And then we'll have f of x. If we put 0 for x, this is 3 times the greatest integer 0, and 3 times 0 is, well, 0. Now, what if I put into decimal? Decimals are key here. You cannot just graph with integers. You need to look at the decimals too because that will tell you a lot. I'll have 3 times 5 tenths, but it's not 5 tenths, it's the greatest integer 5 tenths. Well, what is the greatest integer that's not greater than 5 tenths? Well, it's either going to be 0 or 1. 1 is bigger than 5 tenths, so that 5 tenths with this function turns into 0, and 3 times 0 is still 0. What about in the next one? 1. We'll have 3 times 1, but it's the greatest integer function, 1, and when they're integers, it's really not that much to think about because this is still just 3 times 1, which is 3. What about something like 1.5? Well, this would be 3 times the greatest integer function, 1 and a half. And what's the greatest integer that's not greater than 1 and a half? Well, it's either 1 or 2. 1 is the answer here, because 2 is bigger. So 3 times 1 is 3. And I think you can kind of see where this is going now. Maybe. What if I put 2 in? It is important still, though, to look at the integers, but the decimals as well. So 3 times, it's supposed to be a 3 there. 3 times the greatest integer 2 is 6. And it doesn't always have to be 5 tenths. What if I looked at 2 and 8 tenths? Well, 3 times greatest integer function 2 and 8 tenths. What's the greatest integer that's not bigger than 2 and 8 tenths? That's 2. And 3 times 2 is 6. And just quickly, we'll look at 3 and say 3 and 3 tenths, our 3 times 3 results in 9, and our 3 times greatest integer function 3 and 3 tenths, the greatest integer not bigger than 3 and 3 tenths is still 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. And so as we draw our graph, we'll have a closed dot at 0. We'll have a closed dot at 1, 3. We'll have a closed dot at 2, 6. And we could draw in another line up here just to kind of see it a little bit. We'll have a closed line at 3, 9. 
Now, what makes these special, what makes these step functions, remember, even 5 tenths, when I put this in for x, got me 0. So everywhere here from 0 to 1 is going to be 0 for y. So I represent that by drawing a line here with an open circle. Because then, as I'm traveling here, no matter what I put in from here all the way up until this point, it's going to crank out a 0. And then, at this point when I hit 1, I jump up to here. Because when I put in 1, my result was 3. Even when I put in 1 and a half, my result was 3. So I'm going to stay here on this line up into this point. So I can draw this line in and then a open circle. Because no matter what I put in, 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, that's still going to be 3 times 1, which was 3 all the way up until this circle here. That's when I jump up to 2, and 3 times 2 was 6. So it's going to look like that. Now what about the negative side? Don't want to ignore our negatives. It's going to follow the same pattern in this question. And so if I just looked at, say, negative 1, That's negative 3. And so that comes down here, a little open circle there, and we can kind of assume that it's going to continue. But it's going to be in multiples of 3. So even when I put in negative 2, 3 times greatest integer function negative 2 is negative 6, which is going to be there. Use the right color. So there. Now, our domain. Still all real numbers here. But our range, our values of y's, are special. Thus, special functions. Because notice, our range, our y values, 0, 3, 6, 9, negative 3, negative 6. They're all multiples of 3. So our range can be defined as all integer multiples of 3. Now in example 2, we get to take a look at a taxi company and a real-life step function. A taxi company charges a fee for waiting at a rate of 75 cents per minute or any fraction thereof. Draw a graph that represents the situation. So we're going to have a taxi waiting fee here. And if we just set up our x, and we'll have our f of x again. Now, if we're waiting between 0 and 1 minute, so anything that's less than or equal to 1 minute, so between 0 and 1 minute, that's going to be a 75 cent charge. If we're between 1 and 2 minutes, that's going to be, well, double that, times $2.50. If we're going to be more than 2, but less than and equal to 3, so between 2 and 3 minutes, another $0.75, cents, $2.25, and so on. Between 3 and 4 minutes, that's going to be $3. Between 4 in five minutes, that's going to be $3.75. And between five, and we'll stop here at six minutes, that's going to be $4.50. So if we move this on over to our graph, we'll have our minutes on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six minutes on our bottom. And we can graph our money on the side, $0.75. $1.50, $2.25. $3.375, and then $4.50. We can now graph. When we're in between 0 and 1 minutes, we still had to pay $0.75. Cents. And so we were at 0 to a closed circle there. Exactly 1 minute, it was $0.75. Cents. But when we were between 1 minute 
in exactly two minutes. It was $1.50. And then up between two minutes and exactly two twenty or three minutes, it was $2.25, and so on. And you can just continue drawing this all the way up. So these pieces in between represented those half minutes or seconds. Um, so any fraction thereof is contained here. Now in our next example, we have what's called an absolute value function. So we'll graph the function and state the domain and range. Now the key here with our range is that it's going to be all non-negative numbers. And so we're only going to be dealing with positive numbers. So we can actually find here a minimum point first. And so to find our minimum point, we can set y equal to 0. Because we know that it's, y is not going to be less than 0. So y is going to equal the absolute value of 2x plus 2. We can just say, well, now 2x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, you get negative 2 equals 2x. Divide by 2 on both sides, you get negative 1 equals x. So our minimum is going to be at negative 1, 0. And so we can graph that right now at negative 1, 0. And now next, we can use a table of values to graph the rest of the function. So if our function is the absolute value of 2x plus 2. We can create a table now for our x and our f of x when x is equal to negative 4. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is a positive 6. When we put in Let's say negative 3. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Plus 2 is negative 4. Absolute value of that is positive 4. And we can keep going. Put a negative 2 times 2. Negative 4 plus 2, negative 2. Absolute value, positive 2. What about negative 1? Times neg negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Absolute value of 0 is just, well, 0. And now we can keep going with our table. We'll draw this down a little longer here. What about 0? 2 times 0 is 0. Plus 2 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. Now you can see where this is starting to turn around a little bit here. If we put in 1. 2 times 1, 2. Plus 2, 4. Put in 2. Times 2, 4. Plus 2, 6. And now, let's go to graph this. Negative 4, positive 6 is here. Negative 3, positive 4 is here. Negative 2, 2. We already graphed our negative 1, 0. Our 0, 2, 1, 4. And lastly, 2, 6. It's a V, just like in our key concept box. And so unlike our parabolas, we can actually just draw this as a V. Remember, our parabolas, we were encouraged to draw those as curved shapes. These you can just draw as a V. And that's how you can graph an absolute value function. Now, let's not forget about our, about our domain and range. Our domain is still all real numbers. Versus our range, not quite all real numbers, it's all non-negative numbers. Could probably say all positive numbers too, but eh, non-negative is fun as well. Now in our next example here, graph the function, state the domain, and range. This is an example of what's called a piecewise defined function.
And so we're going to graph really two different functions just depending on where the x is. And so let's look at our first one. When x is less than 0, we'll have f of x is going to be equal to negative x when x is less than 0. And so now we can make an xy chart or an x f of x chart, same thing, x, y, x, f of x, where it's less than 0. So 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Well, when x is 0, we put that in, and negative 0 is 0. Put in negative 1, that's positive 1. Negative 2 would be positive 2. Negative 3, 3. Negative 4, 4, and so on. Now, because this is less than here, that means this point where x is less than 0, we're going to represent with a circle on the graph, or just an open dot. Now let's go ahead and make our function for the next graph as well. f of x equals negative x plus 2 as long as x is greater than or equal to 0. So we'll have x and f of x again. And now we're looking at 0 and larger. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And when at 0, negative 0 plus 2 is just 0 plus 2, which is 2. Put in a 1, you get negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. Negative 2 plus 2, 0. You put in 3, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 2 when you put in 4. Now, since this is greater than or equal to 0, this 0 value is going to be a closed dot on our graph. And so now we get to graph these functions. At 0, 0 for the first one, we'll go 0, 0 with an open circle, but then negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3, negative 4, 4. And so now we can draw this line in. Like so. And then we'll have our second one. But 0, 2 is going to be a closed dot. Then going 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, negative 1, 4, negative 2. So this will be going down in this direction here, like so. And now all that's left to do is to define our domain and range, our domain our x values, that's still all real numbers, and our y values for our range, well, it's hitting all the y values, and it will, so we can still say all real numbers for our range. And in our last example, we'll be asked to graph the function and state the domain and range one more time. We have f of x equals x minus 3 if x is less than or equal to 1. And we'll have f of x equals 2x if x is greater than 1. So we'll take a look and make a table first for f of x equals x minus 3. And this will be when for our x's and our f of x, as long as our x values are 1 or smaller. So 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2 works. Put in 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 0 minus 3, negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3, negative 4. Negative 2 minus 3, negative 5. In this, we had the or equal to on the 1. So this point here will be a closed dot. And now we get to do our second table. f of x equals 2x. So once Again, make an x and f of x. And this is when x is larger than 1, so we'll look at 1, 2, 3, and 4. You put in 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2, 4. 3 times 2, 6. 4 times 2, 8. And now for this value, it's going to be an open circle, like so. Let's go ahead and graph this now. We'll have 1, 
negative 2, 0, negative 3, negative 1, negative 4, negative 2, negative 5. We had our closed dot to start, and now we're coming down in this direction. What about our second part of this piecewise defined function? We have an open circle at 1, 2, and a closed at 2, 4, 3, 6, and lastly at 4, 8. And we can draw this line up and in. And now our domain. Our x values appears to be all real numbers again. And our range for y, we do have a limit here. Notice, negative 2 on, we're fine. And actually then, 2 up, we're fine. But there's a gap here that will never be covered. So for our range, we're going to say, well, it's going to be our values of y, when y is less than or equal to negative 2, since we had a closed dot here at negative 2. And we're also then going to say when y is greater than 2. And the reason it's greater than is we had the open circle. So the range are all y values as long as it's less than or equal to negative 2 or greater than 2. Lastly, we have our concept summary for special functions. We have the step function that we worked a bit on in the first part of the lesson. We have the absolute value function where you find the minimum and then you look at your values from there. And we finished with the piecewise defined function. And that is it for this lesson on special functions. Good luck.